Elaine, that's a wonderful scene. <laughs> when we first come on, I, I realize that, you know, our Lord unveils us. He does, doesn't he? He does. And when he does, he reveals his beauty, his glory in us. That's right. And then it begins to shine out to others, doesn't it? It's a wonderful thing. It really is. You know, we met this wonderful couple. Um, yes, we did. We had, in fact, you all probably, if you remember one of the shows that we did, we had Pastor Barnabas was on the show. And anyway, he was invited to speak at their church. Um, and through them, we got to meet this wonderful couple. Absolutely. And so yeah. we got to introduce them, don't we? Just go right ahead, huh? Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, Y'all, this is a really special privilege uh, because, well, I don't want to give it away. I want them to tell their story. All right, this is Pastor Steve yes. and, and his wife, Mehete. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, your full name is um, Pastor Steve Condi. Yes. And so you have a, it's not just one church, if I understand you right. You are pastoring the two of you now in Cary, but you also have churches in Africa and New York and where all? I could, I, I'm afraid yeah, to say we, I'll overstep myself. <laughs> Yes, we we oversee uh, some uh, some churches uh, in Dallas, uh, in Louisville, Dallas. Okay. okay. Yes, and um, we have another one in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, we are in Cary too, and uh, launching to open more churches. Praise and, God. And uh, prior to that, we have some other churches in Africa, but we're working to see how we can. Uh, put a really hand on them and uh, help and uh, do whatever they need to do so that they can continue the work. Your church is a, has a very unique name. And I never asked the two of you, uh, neither did you, Rex, how you two happened to choose the name of your church. So you want to share that? Wonderful. This has been a revelation. God called us to to work as uh, bridge builders, uh -huh. just helping people to come and we serve as bridge. And he gave us that name. It's uh, the ministry God gave to everybody. In the, in the Bible, if you read Second yes. Corinthians, you'll see that it's really written that our ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. It was a revelation God gave us and we took it. I love it. <coughs> I love it. That was Reconciling us to God. God. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. wow. We are bridge builders. That's the bridge. Bridge. I think that's awesome because without being a bridge builder, there's no hope for people. The bridge is what helps people get from here to yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it's very, very... Uh, important how you build that bridge. You have to have proper structure, proper support, and what you're doing is building a structure. And right or no? Yes, yes, you're right. But you know, the Bible says God has given the materials of construction to women. God says they if. A wife is wise; she can build up her house. Ah. But the wife, the Bible is the, the Bible is talking about is the church, yes. and the materials has been given to the church. So the church is the extension of the hands of God. You know, God has some hands to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we just bring people and connect them to Jesus. Jesus is the way. But the bridge to Jesus is you, it's her, it's uh, Marithi. And all of us, we have materials, faith, yes. prayer life, meditation, helping others to stand when they are weak. It's all we do. Build extra support to help the weak. Yes. Yes. Very important. Very important. You know, every single word, you can talk to somebody, you never know how 
that can help. Yes. Sometimes you you take it as granted or nothing at all, but when it goes with the power mm. of anointing, it changes someone's life. I talked to someone, you see, ready to probably to give up or to but just to tell him that Jesus loves you. You see things changing. And so Elaine, you were gonna ask them about maybe there was a bridge that was built between those two. Well, there must have been because they're married. <laughs> so how did you two meet? Hmm. It's a strange story. Okay. It's a strange story. How to say that, you know, God is amazing and God is. is very good. When I was growing up, I'm the firstborn of a big family of 13 siblings. Wow. But seven, we were seven girls and six boys. Wow. And then my sisters, almost all of them, they got married before me. And I was not married. But things happen in my family because the devil, you know, he tried, what he's doing is written in John 10.10. 10. He comes, he wants to destroy, to kill. Mm -hmm. That's the job, and to steal. That's the job of the devil. But at the end of that sentence, I love what God said. But me, when I come, <laughs> I came to give life, yeah. and life abundantly. Yeah. And uh, the devil tried to destroy my life and the life of my family. At the beginning, we were, we were, not, we were Christian, but we were Catholic, but not pra yeah. practical. We were not practice, not going to church, but the devil came and destroyed my family. We got sickness, my, guy, my dad died. Oh. Then, but before he died, he was separated to my, my mom. And uh, all the kids went in uh, so many directions. And I lost one of my, my brother. That was a very sad story. And, uh, but the, the Bible said that everything I, I come together for the good. Who loves the good? Who loves God? So I, I start seeking God, and I was involved in my church, and I said, God, what I want is to serve you. And I, I've been asking for marriage for a long time, but it was just like, I want God to give me something. It was like, a, a, a God I was using just to get what I want, hmm. but he didn't give me the marriage that soon. <laughs> All my siblings were married. <laughs> and then I understood at the end that, no, what I have to do is to serve God. And the Bible is clear. It says, seek first the kingdom of God, and everything else shall be given unto you. Do you know that was the verse? Everything is me. That was the verse <laughs> that I claimed. If I said, Lord, if I'm ever going to get married, I said, I'm going to do what Matthew 6.33 says. Seek first the kingdom of God. So when people ask me how I caught Rex, I said, I did it on Matthew 6.33. That's exactly what I did. I was, if you meet my pastor today, he will tell you, this lady... She was going with me everywhere. And I started going with my pastor everywhere, <laughs> working like a crazy. And then one lady of my church, one day, he was looking for a wife. And then he <laughs> talked to that lady. And the lady said, I know a, a girl in my church. You should meet her. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it awesome how God takes and puts people together? Yes. Yes. I mean, it is amazing because I watched the same thing happen with Rex and I. God just threw us together. I was going with him. Same thing everywhere. I mean, same. Uh, seemed like we ate breakfast together, lunch together, and dinner together. <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> exaggerating, but you know, well, that's how much we were thrown together okay. five days a week mm -hmm. like that. And you watch how God takes and uses that to bring you together and mm -hmm. then to confirm mm -hmm. that God has put 
two of you together. Exactly. Yeah, I forgot when we were in school, the Lord even sent us to the office and we ended up going to the <laughs> same place to go to work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I worked there and she My worked God. there. And they didn't hire anybody else. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> and I had no transportation. <laughs> so that's what I mean. God throws people yeah, together. Yeah, that's God together. Yes. And the one we met, in, 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 I, I said, okay, let's pray about it. But I don't know what God showed him. He said, you can pray. Me, I know that it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, but you know, <laughs> she was looking for a answer from God. That answer never came. I told her, God already talked to me. You know, the problem in the marriage is every single one want to hear himself from God. But sometimes God may talk to the husband, not to the wife. Mm -hmm. Or to the wife, not to the husband. That, we don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. That was the case. Yeah. But she was very exceptional, as she yeah. is till now. Very helpful. She's up, praying for other people. She's a wonderful uh, yeah. woman of God. I think this God was preparing me for the ministry. Because uh, when I start working with my pastor... I was fearful, I, and I said, I want just to pray for other people. And I thought that when I take care of others, God is taking care of me. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's what I'm doing till now. Right. You know, I'm so, you know, your story really impresses me because you said something at the beginning that the Satan is here to kill, steal, and destroy. One of those words in the Greek even has the connotation of a pickpocket. You know, it's slowly done. You know, you're totally unaware, but it's a little mm -hmm. bit stolen here, yeah. a little bit there. Sneaky. Sneaky. Yes. Sneaky. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very sneaky. But because you love the Lord so much, and he promises that he'll work everything together for good, mm -hmm. look what he did. He took and he turned such a negative situation over and made it totally positive. I know. And now that radiates out to the people you minister to. And um, I'm telling you, I know uh, now, and I said that maybe God lets me wait so long for the marriage so I can talk to single ladies. And I know how to talk to them. And uh, I, I, God put something in me while I was waiting, and uh, I know that I have to give to others. It's not easy to, s to be a single, single lady Christian. It's not easy to be a single mom, and I have, s have them in my church. I see how they struggle, mm. and uh, I know that they have to wait on the Lord. I want you to do something. Uh, I too have seen and talked to so many single women who so desperately want a husband. And I know today there's people watching, particularly single women watching right now. A lot of them are discouraged. I've been praying, I've been waiting, but Lord, you haven't sent the right man mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. I want you to give a word of hope to them and pray for them. So just look at them and give them that word of hope. Mm. Mm. Yeah, what I know is uh, God is good. God knows everybody. And the Bible said that it is not good for a man to be alone. That means God has someone for each one of you. Mm. 